الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم تسليما كثيرا أما بعد In this video now my beloved brothers and sisters we want to speak about the third act that could soften an individual's heart and that is غض البصر Lowering the gaze Ibn Taymi rahmatullahi alayhi he quotes Mujahid ibn Jabr, a student of Abdullah ibn Abbas radiyallahu ta'ala anhuma. You can find it in Majmu' al-Fatawa. He says, غَضُّ الْبَصَرِ عَنْ مَحَارِمِ اللَّهِ يُورِثُ حُبَّ اللَّهِ Lowering your gaze from that which Allah Azza wa Jal has prohibited, it brings about the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this, my beloved brothers and sisters, is not something that might be easy. However, as we mentioned in the previous episodes, you will not be able to attain success without going through hardships and navigating around the different challenges that we face or that we come across and the obstacles that we have to move out of our way. Abdullah ibn Mas'ud radiallahu ta'ala anhu, he says, حِفْظُ الْبَصَرِ أَشَدُّ مِنْ حِفْظِ الْلِسَانِ Lowering the gaze is even more difficult than preserving your tongue. Ibn al-Qayyim rahmatullahi alayhi says, غَضُّ الْبَصَرِ عَنْ مَحَارِمِ اللَّهِ يُجِبُ الثَّلَاثَ فَوَائِدِ Lowering your gaze from that which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made haram brings about three benefits. The first one he says, حَلَاوَةُ الْإِيمَانِ وَلَذَّتُهُ Tasting the sweetness of Al-Iman. By doing so, it will taste the sweetness of Al-Iman. Every single one of us, my beloved brothers and sisters, craves the things that really increase our Iman, right? It's from the things that we tend to ask about from time to time. I have it written down as a common question that the people ask. Maybe it might be a good idea for someone to collect all of the hadith that speak about one is not a true believer until he does this. Iman is mentioned. That an individual, if he does this, then indeed he has Iman, and so on and so forth. And the statements of the scholars that speak about tasting the sweetness of Iman, if one does X, Y, and Z, and here is one of them. So after mentioning the first benefit of lowering your gaze, he then says, فَإِنَّ مَنْ تَرَكَ شَيْئًا لِلَّهِ عَوَّضَهُ اللَّهُ خَيْرًا مِنْ Indeed, if you leave something for the sake of Allah, Allah will compensate for you that which is better. The second thing that he mentions, my beloved brothers and sisters, is نُورُ الْقَلْبِ وَسِحَةُ الْفَرَاسَةِ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will enlighten your heart. Allah azza wa jalla will glow in your heart. And you will be gifted with something called al-farasa. What does al-farasa mean? There are those who are able to see things before others. They can see a fitna coming from a mile away. And others, after the fitna has finished, that's when they realize, oh, that was actually a fitna that we fell into, that we didn't pay notice to. Also the scholars they mention, Al-Farasa, sometimes you can look at somebody's face and you can tell what kind of individual that he is. Third point that he mentioned is قُوَّةُ الْقَلْبِ وَثَبَاتُهُ وَشَجَاعَتُهُ وَيَهْرَبُ الشَّيْطَانُ مِنْهُ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will make your heart a brave one and a strong one. And it will be firm. And the shaitan will run away from that individual. We know that the shaitan used to run away from which companion? Umar ibn Khattab radiallahu ta'ala anhu, right? The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam told us, never does the shaitan huh? Never do you take a particular path except that he takes a path other than the one that you're taking, O oh, Umar. Another narration, Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi said, Wallahi, inna shaytana lay khafu mink. By Allah, the shaytan is scared of you. 
Umar ibn Khattab radiyallahu ta'ala anhu's iman was unmatched. And we know that with the dream that was seen of Umar ibn Khattab radiyallahu ta'ala anhu, his iman, my brothers and my sisters, was sky high. And we can take away from that. The higher your iman is, the further and more distant the shayateen are going to be from that individual. Again, we always ask about jinn possession. Why is it that the jinns may possess someone more than another? It may well be that he has become distant from that which is pleasing to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He is now engaging in that which destroys one's iman. Take a lesson from this. Shaytan yahrabu minhu. Shaytan will what? Run away from that individual who has a strong iman. And without a shadow of a doubt, when one lowers his gaze, especially in this kind of environment that we're in, this sexualized environment, then the reward is going to be so much more greater. Also, my beloved brothers and sisters, Ibn al Qayyim rahmatullahi alayhi says, Lama kan al basaru aslan li al qalb. When it has been established that the basr, the eyes, is a foundation in preserving the heart. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He mentioned lowering the gaze before safeguarding the private part. Because what the eyes can't see, the heart will not desire. Is it possible for someone to just fall into zina without looking, my beloved brothers and sisters? It's pretty much impossible, right? It is that glance that then turns into a deeper look, which then causes one's desires, his lust, to intensify. And then one thing leads to another. So the Prophet ﷺ said, Zin al ainain al nadr wa zin al lisan al nut wa zin al yad al batsh. The zin of the eyes is to look. The zin of the eyes is to look. And the zin of the tongue is to what? have inappropriate conversations with the opposite gender. And the zina of the hands is to reach out. And the zina of the feet is al-mashi, walking towards that haram. But how did it all start? It started with the eyes. That one used for haram. And then he recited a statement of Allah Azzaqul lil mu'mineen yaghuddu min absarihim wa yahfudhu furujhum. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he instructed his messenger to say, قُلْ say, lil mu'mineen to the believers, to lower their gazes and to safeguard their private parts. What was the first thing that was mentioned? Lowering the gaze. This is why Ibn al-Qayyim rahmatullahi alayhi, he mentions, فَالْعَيْنُ مِرْآتُ الْقَلْبِ The eyes are the mirror of the heart. لِلْقَلْبِ مِرْآه The qalb has a mirror. And it looks into. مَا مِرْآتُ الْقَلْبِ What is the mirror of the heart? العين is the eyes. فَإِذَا غَضَّ بَصَرَهُ When the eyes lower his gaze, غَضَّ الْقَلْبُ شَهْوَتَهُ You see that the heart reduces in that which it craves in fulfilling its desires. The want and the need for desires, my beloved brothers and sisters, reduces because of you reducing your, or because of you lowering your gaze. A desire doesn't become intensified as it would if one kept on looking at that which he shouldn't. A question that I was asked yesterday by one of the brothers after the class was, how can one divert his heart away from craving the haram that people have? It could be the haram money that people have accumulated. My beloved brothers and sisters, we haven't just been told to lower our gaze when it comes to looking at the opposite gender. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala instructed his Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to lower his gaze as well, but from what? وَلَا تَمُدَّنَّ عَيْنَيْكَ إِلَى مَا مَتَّعْنَا بِهِ أَزْوَاجًا مِّنْهُمْ زَهْرَةَ الْحَيَاةِ الدُّنْيَا لِنَفْتِنَهُمْ فِيهِ I sought to lower his gaze from the glitters and the glamours of this dunya because they're fit enough for the people. All of these worldly pleasures are there 
as a fitna for the people. Let me ask every single one of you a question. What happens when an individual just keeps on glaring and gazing at the worldly pleasures that people have? It builds an intensifying feeling or that feeling intensifies in your heart to attain that which the people possess, right? And because it becomes so intensified in your heart, and you might not necessarily have the means to acquire that, one now turns to haram. So that he now finds himself in a position to buy all of these goods and things that people possess. He might end up taking a haram loan. How many weddings my brothers and my sisters were taken on a haram loan? An interest-based loan, just so they can have a lavish, extravagant wedding. And it all started with seeing others do that which you now want to do. They done it, so I wanted it as well. But how did it all start? It started with a look. The cars that some of your relatives may have, the homes that they live in. You want that now as well because you looked at it and you kept on looking at it and the desire intensified in your heart. It all started with a look. So lowering your gaze even from the things that people possess can save you from a lot of haram. And to conclude my beloved brothers and sisters, I want to quote Ibn al-Jawzi rahmatullahi alayhi when he said, وَعْلَمْ أَنَّ أَصْلَ الْعِشْقِ إِطْلَاقُ الْبَصَرِ He says that the root cause of having this obsessive, addictive love for something is not lowering your gaze. وَكَمَا يَخَافَ عَلَى الرَّجُلِ مِنْ ذَلِكِ يَخَافَ عَلَى الْمَرْأَةِ Just as it is feared that a man would become obsessively addicted to a woman or that which is haram, it is also feared similarly for a woman. وَقَدْ ذَهَبَ دِينُ خَلْقٍ كَثِيرٍ مِنَ الْمُتَعَبِّدِينَ بِإِطْلَاقِ الْبَصَرِ And he says, the religiosity of so many of those who are devout worshippers of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was lost because of them not lowering their gaze. They lost their religion, brothers and sisters. فَلْيَحْذَرْ مِنْ ذَلِكَ Let this individual be wary of that. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us from that. You know what that uh, reminds me of? When we have Muslims today who may be practicing, but they become exposed to the doubts that are spread by the people of Kufr on the world wide web, that one then exposes himself to, reads, looks into, which then causes the Iman to deteriorate in his heart, to diminish. And then, before you know it, he has left his heart altogether. Again, it goes back to where? The eyes. Social media. You see, subhanAllah, young brothers and sisters all of a sudden changing the way they dress and the way they behave. Perhaps it was because of what they looked at on social media. Today, it is as if our children are outside of the home even though they're still inside of these four walls that we guard and that is because of social media the days when we would tell our kids not to hang around with the wrong crowd and thinking that this is the only way they're going to become corrupted then days are long gone because of these gadgets that they have access to they are inside of the home and outside at the same time her dress code changes maybe because she was watching some of these Hijabi YouTubers online. Some of them end up taking of the hijab. They end up taking that same path because of what they keep on looking at, which leads them to become desensitized to the haram that has become so widespread. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us all tawfiq. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Assalamu alaikum. We at the Knowledge College have managed to revolutionize the way Islamic studies is taught in the West. Alhamdulillah. You see, before the Knowledge College, you'd have to find a teacher, which is a hard enough task 
as it is. And if you found that teacher, you'd have to hope that he would actually finish the book that he was teaching, which again was not very likely. But now, alhamdulillah, you can study and seek knowledge from the comfort of your own home. And you're not just watching videos that have been pre-recorded, but you're actually being taught live where you can actually engage with your teachers and with your fellow students in the communities that we built for you guys online. If you'd be interested in seeking knowledge and taking your religion to the next level, then click the link below and check it out. We've got over a thousand students that have joined us over the last year and a half, and they've hugely benefited. We hope that you would be one of the next students, inshallah ta'ala. Assalamu alaikum.